In the uh, the last video, we completed the phaser tutorial and we got the game hopefully working. And uh, you know, now what I'd like to do is kind of go back and look at all the features and the things that we did, and maybe see if we can add to them or modify them, and you know, do a little more, right, and expand on on what was in the tutorial. Um, so uh, so far, you know, our game kind of looks like this. And you know the character moves around, can pick up the uh, the um, the stars, and uh, maybe I'll clean up these stars right here. And our problem is like, you know, when the game is over, let's see if I can die now, right? Oh, there I'm dead. So the game is over, and now in order to run the game again, we have to refresh the browser, and there's no message. So maybe a simple thing to do first would be when the character is is hit by the bomb, we print up a message here that says game over, right? And we kind of did a little bit of this already, like we created the text here and we created some text when we did the starter project, right? Um, so we'll just need to do those things again and then position our text in a spot where we can see it, right? So let's open up Adam and look at what we have. So how does the game function? Well, it's got a variable in the game scene class called game over, right? And so it's set to false when the game is playing and it's and the game is not over, right? And then as we scroll down here, um, as I get near the bottom, there's a, um, a hit bomb, right? So player and bomb. So when, it, when the player hits a bomb, you know, and that happens in the collider here. It's set up in this collider with physics add player and bombs, right? And when one of the bombs hits the player, you know, we pause the physics engine. So that makes everything stop, kind of freezes everything on the screen. We tint the player red, and then we give the player the animation called turn, right? And that makes it face the camera, right? So we, it's the center um, image in the sprite sheet, and then we set game over to true, right? And so actually the game over to true really doesn't do anything. It just kind of is a marker in the game, right? So, um, but, uh, but that, that's how it works, right? So we hit this thing and it pauses everything, right? So what if we also, you know, let's comment this out. So I'll say, you know, how about show game over text, right? So we could show that here, but that would mean that we actually created the game over text, right? So why don't we go up to our create method, and here's where we create everything, and we created the score text here, so we can kind of use that as a model. Um, let me make a little bit of space here. This is kind of a long line, right? So I'm going to copy this line right here and uh, paste it again. And we'll need to have a variable to hold this new um, this new uh, text field, right? So or text object. So let's call it game over text, right? It's kind of a descriptive name, right? And when we call this dot add text, we set the x and the y to position it on the screen. So sixteen sixteen would put it in the upper left corner, like pretty close to the upper left corner. But I want to put it in the middle, and our game is 400 by or 800 by 600 so if I make it 400 by 300 that should put us pretty close to the center and the text shouldn't say score zero it should say you know game over right and just like this will display the game over text right forever right so let's just look oh yeah there it is right and I can see that it's not quite in the middle because the 400, 300 is the point that's in the upper left corner here. So this is the center of the screen. So really, I want the center of the text to be right here, right? So how can we do that? You'll, if you remember earlier, um, we can set the origin point, right? So the origin is where the text draws from. And right now, it's drawing from the upper left corner. And we want it to draw from the center. So. What we can do is we can go, I'm going to get rid of that semicolon, right? We can go here and we can say, uh, you know, this dot game over text dot set origin, right? And then we can say what the origin is. And I'm going to say 0.5, right? So if it's zero, it'll be in the upper left corner. If it's 0.5, it'll be in the center. And if it was one, it'll be in the lower right corner. Let's try one just for fun. 
oh yeah, so now the center is right here. And if I put it at uh, 0.5, that'll put it in the middle. And actually, you can put two numbers in here. So this is, with with two values, this is the, the center on the x, the origin on the x, and this is the origin on the y. But if you only include one number, it does them both to the same value, because I guess that's a common thing. You'll, you usually want to put it in the middle, right? So there's our, our game over text. Let's modify the text a little bit more. Um, these are the options for the text right here. And this is the font size and the color. Maybe I'm going to make the font size a little bigger. Maybe I'll just double it and make it 64, right? Yeah, that looks pretty game over, right? OK, so that's really good, except the game isn't over, right? I'm playing still. So we can't see the game over text until the game is over. So why don't we do this? We'll, we'll say, and, and I'll show you how I figured this out. I had to look it up in the documentation, right? I can't. I don't know all the methods and properties of objects, but the uh, the game over text um, has a, a visible property, right? And if I set that to false, that means the game over text is not visible, like we can't see it, okay? And I'll show you how I found that. I had to look that up in the documentation. So, um, you know, I can set this to visible, and then if I set it to true, right, it should come back, right? So we can use that, um, let me set this back to false again, right? So when our, when our game loads up and we create it, we'll create this and make it invisible, right? Or visible false. And then down here at the bottom, remember where we put that, that comment in, we can say, okay, hey, when the player hits a bomb, why don't we show the game over text by saying this dot game over text dot visible equals true. Okay, so let's save that and we'll, we'll give it a try, right? So I'm sorry you got to sit through me uh, playing the game again because um, I got to get a bomb to show up, right? I'm getting pretty good at this leap right here and there's a bomb. Let's see if I can get hit by the bomb. Ah, oh, game over, right? So that was pretty good. Okay, so um, how did I figure that out? I'm going to go into... Um, to Google, I'm going to search for uh, phaser, and we're using version 3, so I'm going to search for version 3 docs, okay? Seems to be a popular search. And if I go to the GitHub pages here, they have, uh, you know, a bunch of categories up at the top here, and remember, we're in a scene, right? So this we're extending phaser scene, so I'm going to start there, and when I click here to create the text, I I called the add method, so I'll click on that. And then I created a text object, right? So I'm going to scroll down here. It's a little hard to find here. Um, if you make the window a little wider, you can see kind of a menu here. So I'm going to scroll down here, and there's sprite star text, right? So here is where we created the text. And this shows us the, um, the parameters for text. So when we say scene add dot text right the first two parameters are required and this is the x and the y and the third parameter is required and that's the text that's going to be displayed and then the the stuff that's in the square brackets are optional items so the style is optional okay and we can tell what these are because we can read the parameter description at the bottom so X is required if it's not in the square brackets, right? So X is a number, it's the horizontal position, Y is a number, it's the vertical position, text is a string or an array string. Hmm, interesting, right? So this is a, oh, I guess, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's an array of strings. Maybe it takes some optional parameter, but this is a string and then the text that the object will display, right? And then style is an optional argument and, uh, the textile configuration object. So we, we'd have to look that up and they'll give us a link to that at some point. As we go down the documentation, this gives us the source. It tells us where this is. It's in the textfactory.js. So if we go here, it'll take us to the source code. Um, it tells us what it returns. It returns a game object. This is important, right? So it returns a game object. That's a type of object in, inside Phaser, right? That was created. So it creates a game object. And then if I look here, it's type gameobject.txt. 
So text extends game object. And if I click on this to go to game object, I can see other properties because you'll notice here, it doesn't show us the visible property, right? I kind of wish it did, it would be nice, but uh, we actually got to go find that because that belongs to game object. So I'm going to click on game object and this tells us about game objects here and we can kind of read about them. And you know, it gives us some code samples for text, which is pretty cool, right? And uh, it gives us some other options for creating text. And as we get into here, you can see it extends, um, you know, game object, and then it shows us some other features that they have, right? And if I keep going down here, it says members, and it's got active, it's got alpha, it's got alpha bottom. I had to read through these, right? So I'm gonna just scroll all the way to the bottom here um, to save some time. Um, line spacing, oh, that could be useful. Origin Y, padding, uh, parent container. I'm gonna keep going, scale X, scale Y. So, it, it, so the text object inher inherits all of these, right? It's got a scene property. It knows what scene it's in. Scroll factor X. I like that name. Um, split reg expression. Hmm, interesting. State, um, style, right? Um, tab index, text string, texture, tint. I'm almost there. Tint bottom, tint fill. It's got a bunch of tint properties. I wonder if you, that lets you add a gradient, right? Um, as the fill for the uh, for the text. You should try it. Um, I'm going to keep going here, somewhere down here. Why? Wait, did I pass it? <laughs> I totally passed it. Um, oh, visible. There it is, right? So I found the visible, which is a Boolean, the visible state of the object, right? An invisible game object will skip rendering, you know, but will still process update logic. So it'll still kind of exist in the background. It just won't draw, okay? So it's a Boolean, so it can be true or false. So anyway, this is what I did is I read the documentation. You know, I found my way through here. It took a little while to figure this out because it's a little confusing and everybody does their documentation differently. But I sorted through that and I was like, okay, this is the property I need to make the text, you know, hidden when I don't want to see it. Okay. So anyway, so that's a quick, uh, quick example of how to add a game over. And then we'll, we'll kind of talk about some more stuff in here and um, add some more features in the next video.